Hello, I'm Dr. David Feeney. Welcome to our course. I'm the guy in the center of the picture, surrounded by my student friends. You can see the title of our course on your screen, as well as my email address, my cell phone number, and my website. Okay, folks, on the big board behind me, you'll see our focus for this week, education in the news. I'll be reviewing these education stories taken from the news that accentuate this week's discussion topics. Today's focus will be on what is giftedness related to week nine discussions, and I'll be basing my remarks in part on the article Gifted People and Their Problems, which you'll see linked in the discussion posts. I urge you to check it out. Here we see a breakdown of some descriptions of cognitive aspects used to diagnose giftedness. Cultural definitions determine how giftedness is diagnosed, how the population is counted, and how resources, if any, are managed. One critical definition is the Marland definition, proposed by Sidney Marlin, the United States Commissioner of Education in 1972. The Marlin definition is used by the United States federal government to define giftedness. The Marlin definition states, Gifted and talented children are those identified by professionally qualified persons who, by virtue of outstanding abilities, are capable of high performance. These are children who require differentiated educational programs and or services beyond those normally provided by the regular school program in order to realize their contribution to self and society. Now, of course, this being America, states and school districts modify federal definitions to administer their own gifted education programs. One typically used modification is the Jacob Javits Gifted and Talented Students Education Act. That legislation defines giftedness as children and youth with outstanding talent who perform or show the potential for performing at remarkably high levels of accomplishment when compared with others of their age, experience, or environment. These children and youth exhibit high performance capability in intellectual, creative, or artistic areas, possess an unusual leadership capacity, or excel in specific academic fields. They require services or activities not ordinarily provided by the schools. Outstanding talents are present in children and youth from all cultural groups, across all economic strata, and in all areas of human endeavors. Early signs of giftedness can be detected in infants and toddlers. Some of those early signs include advanced and early language development, high alertness or attention span, and more. Direct behavioral observation is the best way to accurately diagnose giftedness, but standardized tests, including IQ tests, also play a part in the accurate diagnosis of giftedness. Once labeled as gifted, more curriculum and placement options are usually available, such as enrichment, accelerated pace through learning materials, and grade skipping. Finally, gifted children can also struggle or underachieve in other areas, leading to the classification of gifted underachiever. Because diagnostic criteria are often weakness-based, not strength-based, many children gifted in one particular academic area are often misplaced in regular or even special education. Because they exhibit weaknesses in other areas like a physical disability, social maturity, or attention deficits. Of course, there are challenges and pitfalls to defining giftedness, as the cartoon you see on your screen illustrates. Here, a young boy says, I can suck putting up my nose and blow it out the corner of my eye, but they still won't put me in the gifted class at school. Parents and other teachers know um, that not every talent is a talent that's defined as giftedness. 
If you're interested in more information about giftedness, please consult the website that you see on your screen, which is linked in the post in this week's discussions. Today's focus is going to be on indigenous knowledge, incorporating indigenous knowledge of native cultures into the curriculum related to this week's discussions. You'll see an article on your screen, which is the basis of my comments today, and all articles you see me refer to will be hyperlinks in this week's discussion posts. Here we see a photo of the Alaska Rural uh, Systematic Initiative to include indigenous knowledge from Alaska into the Alaskan public school curriculum. Typically, indigenous knowledge has historically been underrepresented in public school systems. Students from native cultures in public school systems often show low achievement, high attrition, poor retention, weak persistence, low rates of graduation, and success. Typically, the viewpoint has placed the requirements for adjustment on the student. From the perspective of people in the indigenous culture coming to public schooling, the needs may be for a public school resource that is relevant to their view of the world. Local educators are documenting the oral traditional knowledge of indigenous peoples and developing methods to integrate native wisdom into the public education system. However, public schools typically represent a system that is foreign to indigenous knowledge and indigenous cultures. What we see here is a graphic used by the Alaska K-12 Science Curricular Initiative, or AKSCI. This example of indigenous inclusion curriculum was co-developed by University of Alaska Fairbanks and the Alaska Department of Education and Early Development. The goal is to infuse Alaskan native culture and traditional wisdom into K-12 classrooms. The AKSCI is available in classroom materials as well as online, and it incorporates more than 250 physical, earth, and life science lessons based on research conducted with native indigenous Alaskan peoples. Students can revisit content areas and build upon their knowledge online or in the classroom. Or school districts can adopt a three-year curriculum that's mapped to this indigenous knowledge across a science program. The Alaska K-12 Science Curriculum Initiative has an online database that allows teachers to search and use the entire curriculum or to take individual lessons and customize them for their students. It allows teachers to access a variety of multimedia materials and features more than 20 live scientist mentors who are available to work with teachers and students online, the mentors being embedded in the indigenous cultural communities throughout Alaska. If you want more information on AKSCI, you can review the documents or the website that you see here and click the hyperlinks in this week's discussion posts. hoo everybody! You've come to the end of our presentation, and it is truly fist bump in time, even if you're someone who doesn't quite understand the concept of bumping fists. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our video presentation, and I hope that you found it practical and useful. I'm Dr. David Feeney saying, I look forward to learning with and from you. And to all our hardworking students out there, I want to close by saying, much respect, people. Much respect. Take care. Bye now.